tit this up then since since I've got you. So let's talk about subtext. Subtext. Um, that's also one of the last things to come. And what I mean by that is we were just talking about Aaron Sorkin. Right. And I would his first draft that you were talking about probably does not contain very much subtext. Normally you want to get down, you know, what the character is saying, yeah. saying, and then you want to figure out how can they say this in a different way? How can they imply the meaning that you want and yep. so that we have this underlying subtext, not that yeah. we have to have subtext in every speech, of course. No. Uh, yeah. It, but, but we need, we need, uh, it's so much more interesting when a character is beating around the bush or, or innuendo or uh, what have you, that is more interesting than just coming straight out and saying something. So, yeah. I mean, even as simple as here's looking at you kid is, just Perfect. more interesting than I it love is. You. It it's is. Just... <laughs> I got to tell you, Dave, I've, I've been married 20 years and I love it when my wife tells me exactly how she feels. So I don't have to do any kind of like deep research <laughs> into it. And, and I know <laughs> I've known when I frustrated her and she tells me, hey, I'm frustrated. I love that. But we don't want to see that on screen. We don't want people telling us their feelings. We don't want people saying exactly how they feel. We want to beat around the bush because that's interesting. It's interesting to listen to. It's, it gives the character, uh, you know, the actor some meat to work with with the character instead of just instead of just trying to sell a bad line. Um, and, and yeah, the the subtext is is there, and it is some of the some of the last things to do. But one thing I've noticed with subtext, at least what I try and teach is if you're working with it, you want to be trying to say two or three things at the same time. Good advice. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome.